In this video, I'm going to be installing the piston rings on our pistons and filing them. Talk about the filing them. I'm going to use this uh, Total Seal ring filer, uh, but I'm going to discuss just some of the basics of uh, filing rings correctly and how to put them on the piston. The rings I'm going to use are Manly, uh, provided by Total Seal. Total Seal makes these rings. Uh, Manly sells them. So the part number is 46630ST. These are 30 over and they're steel and there's eight eight of them eight sets in here uh the stainless steel ones are good i recommend them for uh any type of boosted application or high horsepower stuff uh, get the stainless steel over the ductile iron okay now i got them laid out the bottom groove basically the oil oil ring uh second compression ring and top ring uh, it also comes with some uh, information on here on how to uh determine what gap ring gap you want and also to uh, get the correct orientation of uh, the top of the piston ring and uh, where you want your gaps on on the piston itself first uh, we need to get our sizes down the the oil ring a minimum of 15 thousandths and a maximum of 30 thousandths is what's recommended by manly uh, so we already know that we'll measure that in a second that'll be the first thing to measure uh, but it gives us up here some different options for uh, how to set our other ring gap. We've got mild boost up to 15, medium boost 15 to 30, high boost 30 plus. Uh, and it gives you something to multiply your bore by to give you the recommended uh, ring gap. Okay, I like to go with uh, medium boost 15 to 30 pounds. It's kind of good in, the, in between. And it says multiply the bore by 0 0.007. We've got 3.582 times 0 0.007, and our recommended ring gap is 25,000. So when I file my rings, I'm going to shoot for 25 uh, to 26 thousandths on my top and second ring. They recommend the same size uh, for both rings. Right, I'm going to go ahead and pull the rings out and just set them on top of the bag. First, I'm going to measure the oil ring. All right, these, the oil rings, they don't have an up or a down, so it doesn't really matter uh, which way you put this in. You put them in with the gap on the bottom, just because I'm used to measuring it that way. You just spiral it on there. Now, when you put this in, you want to make sure that it's equal distance down all the way around. There's little tools and stuff that people sell uh, that they make, uh, but I just use... I just use the piston that uh, the rings are going to go on, and the first one... Uh, is a little bit tricky because it doesn't have the rings on it to stop it. And you just push it down a little bit. Here you can see the gap on the ring. One thing to note from the that gap that's on there is you, the, the two sides are parallel. If you start filing them wrong uh, you, or at an angle, you can actually, when you put it in there, you can look at the gap and you can see instead of the ends being parallel, uh, there's a tip something like that or maybe like that and so the the feeler gauge will only measure the shortest distance so you want to make sure when you're filing it that you uh your your ring gaps are parallel to each other because if you start getting this uh you're not going to get uh good readings okay to measure them uh you're going to need a set of feeler gauges um i know that uh most of the time i've done these these uh oil rings measure around 20 thousandths so i'm going to start with 20 thousandths and when you're sticking the feeler gauge down in between that gap, uh, you want to be careful not to try not to disturb the ring. So, because if you twist it, uh, if the ring isn't lined up, uh, you can also start getting some bad readings. So, if you think that you might have bumped it or whatever, grab the piston uh, and re reset it. Uh, that one 20 cleared, so I'm going to try 22. And I'm going to keep going up in size until I get uh, a, a bit of a drag on, on both sides of the feeler gauge. That one stopped at 26 thousandths, so I'll write that down. All right, so with that one done, I got another oil ring here. I'll measure that. Okay, with that ring measured, we can go ahead and uh, start putting our oil ring on. And we'll first start with this one. We're just gonna spiral it on there. Now these have, you want to make sure this isn't overlapped. 
it's got like uh it, it should be have, have a little gap here where you can at least spread it apart uh, i've accidentally uh put these in where they the grooves kind of overlap each other i uh, just want to make sure that it's butted up against itself properly okay so also when uh, i start assembling these i start to put the gaps where they need to be uh, this is going to be the top of the cylinder one so the gap for uh, that ring is going to be up here and our bottom o-ring gap the gap is going to go over here on this side and now the the top little ring the gap is going to be over here now i'm just i'm just getting them in there to be close uh, before this uh, before this piston goes in i'll double check all the ring gaps uh, oil it up and uh, and slide it in so if it if it's not perfect right now uh, it doesn't matter uh, it'll be it'll be checked again right before it goes in with the first piston done I'm going to repeat all those steps uh, with the other seven pistons going down the line um, and I'm going to put the oil ring on them all I got the oil ring done on all the pistons and I like to do um, the second ring on all of them and then the top ring on all of them because they grind at different rates so when I get used to the second ring, uh, that one grinds kind of easily. And then the, the stainless steel spring, or I'm sorry, the same stainless steel ring, uh, it's a little harder. So material doesn't come off as easy. The second ring here does have a little dot in it. And whenever there's a dot, the instructions say uh, you're going to install that ring with the dot up. So when I mess around with these uh, rings, I uh, figure out which side is up and that side will stay up the entire time. So while I'm measuring it, when I'm grinding on it, when I put it on the piston, uh, it stays up. So the same thing, we're going to put it inside here. Now with the piston, uh, with having the oil ring on there, the oil ring will actually stop the piston uh, and, and have the piston go down uh, flat and straight. Now with these rings being file fit, uh, there's usually not much gap on these. Um, I'm gonna start around five thousandths and, and figure out what the gap is. All right, the gap on this ended up being eight thousandths. So now I'll take the ring over to the filer. Okay, so this is my total seal ring filer. This isn't a must, um, but if you're gonna do more than one set of rings in your lifetime, uh, I highly recommend a tool like this. This makes it so much easier uh, to grind on these rings. Uh, it's so much faster. And I also would recommend getting the one that has the, the little grinder on the side. So after I hit it uh, with the grinder, I, I touch it over here just to get off any little burrs that might come up on the side uh, of the ring. Another one that's like a hand powered one that you uh, clamp down to the, to the uh, workbench and, and the principles are the same. So when I, when I file these rings, I only file one side. So my gap is here. Uh, I'm only going to file this side. And what that does is uh, it leaves me with a, a, a squared off edge to know what is, was parallel. Remember, we want to have the edges like that, not like this or like that. So I know uh, I can reference this side. Also, if for some reason, uh, these piston rings butt up against each other, uh, you'll be able to know if both sides are shiny. That means they, they impacted each other. Another thing, if you're using the wheel, uh, this only spins one way, but if you're using the wheel, uh, try to spin it only one direction. Uh, and that would, would be to where um, it's, it's kind of rolling the material this way so that anything that hangs in there is going to... Uh, uh, go on the inside and then you when you, you can file it down so it's not because you don't want anything sticking out to where it's going to scrape up the cylinder wall as it goes as the piston goes up and down so this was set up for a larger bore uh, piston the last time and so i need to move this up so what i'm doing here is i'm, I'm trying to get it to where uh, the edge of the the ring is going to be parallel with my grinding wheel that way when i start taking material off it goes straight across there. So I'm just going to move this little stopper around. I'm a big fan of eye protection. So once I start grinding on this thing, I'm going to move this knob and it's going to move the, the ring in and out. Or it's going to move it in up against the grinding wheel. Uh, and I do it in an up and down motion like that as I'm, as I'm turning this wheel. 
once the piston ring makes contact with uh, the um, the grinding wheel, I'm going to watch the dial indicator. I'm going to zero the dial indicator out, and then as I move this in, the indicator is going to give me a good idea on how much material is coming off of the ring. So we were at eight thousandths. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and take ten thousandths off, and then take it back over to the engine and see where we're at. Another note about this, I don't like doing this right next to the engine or the piston, so I've moved over here uh, to my dryer, washer and dryer, so on top of that, uh, doing this, I don't like being close. I don't want to fling any material up. I'm going to go ahead and grind some off of this piston ring. off a little bit and we can install it now we were at eight thousands before so I'm going to try start from ten thousands work my way up you know I'm getting thirteen thousands so even though that uh, the machine told me that I took ten thousands off it really only equates to about five thousands on here that's why I said it's, it's not always that accurate uh, so I'm just going to repeat this process until I get to 25 thousandths uh, on all the second uh, rings and then I'm going to repeat the process again for all the top rings. Okay, so of note on the top rings, there is no dot. Uh, it says put the beveled edge up. So on the inside of these rings, there's a, a beveled edge on one side and, and just a flat edge on the other side. So you kind of have to look pretty hard to see which side has got the beveled edge. Uh, and then I went through and I put a dot on each one. Now, one thing uh, I like to do is um, check and make sure that the, the portion of the ring that you grind it on still fits into the groove nice and easily. So if you got like a piece of metal hanging off of there, it won't go in and out of the groove. So I already did it on the second ring, uh, but as I do the, the top ring, same thing. And one of the easy ways to get this in there is to spiral it on. So like as you're checking uh, that it fits in the grooves, you can hold one side and pull up on the other side and just kind of spin it around and then guide it down into the groove. All right, so a little time consuming, but I got all the rings filed uh, and installed. Just take your time with it. The, the second ring kind of moves around a lot. Um, so I was double checking uh, almost almost every measurement that was pretty close to twenty five thousand. So just take your time and uh, and you'll get it right.